Well, hey everybody, Ray here. I'm putting some ribs on the green egg. I'm gonna smoke these for a couple hours. And while they're smoking, I'm gonna have some extra time on my hands. Because once you get these on there to cook, you don't wanna open up and look at them. The old saying is, if you're looking, you're not cooking. So we're gonna get these ribs on there. And while they're doing their thing, we're going to go in and we're going to make ourselves a mini cajon drum. So our ribs are on. Our temperature is going to come back up to about 250. And I'm going to have two hours to kill. So if you want to see how I make this little mini cajon drum, stick around. If you like this video, hit that like button. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you probably know by now that I love to use up scraps. You always wind up with pieces of odd sized wood laying around, and I always try to find things to do with them. So, in this case, to make this mini cajon, I've got some MDF. I'm going to make my first attempt with the MDF. And then I have some pieces of some nice sanded birch with some great grain. So if my prototype works out well, then I'm going to use this to make some more. I'll probably make three or four or five of these, depending on how much scrap I've got and how much time I have. And when I'm done, I'll give some of them to my more musically inclined friends. I also have some scrap um, eighth inch uh, siding that would be used on uh, cabinet paneling or something like that. Um, so I can use this piece too for both the top and the bottom, which should make a good top for the cajon drum. So the depth of my cajon drum will be four inches. I don't know why I picked four inches. I've seen three inches, six inches. I think it's kind of arbitrary. D the depth is going to give you a different sound when you put the cajon together. So I'm just picking four inches to see how that sounds. I'm going to make it eight inches deep and 11 inches wide. And the reason for that is I want it large enough with that 11 inches that if you choose to set it on your lap and play it, you can do that. Or also small enough such that you could attach straps to each side and you could actually hang it and you could play it on your side like this. So that's the reason for the size that I'm going to use um, when I make this go home. So I've set my saw to cut four inches wide and based on the length of this piece of MDF, I can get one long side and one short side off of each cut. So I'm going to have to make two four inch cuts. One thing I failed to mention is when you're cutting MDF, it's got some nasty dust and a lot of it. So remember to wear your mask. I didn't do it on that first cut, but I'm going to do it on this second cut. Now you'll remember I said I wanted to make this uh, 8 by 11. And what I'm doing now is just, I've got plenty of extra wood here, so I'm just going to cut off a 9 inch piece on this side, which will leave me way more than 11 inches on this side, but it'll give me enough extra wood to have some work to roam, work around. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both of these at the same time because it's not absolutely critical at this point um, that the cut is exactly in the same place. So we just want to get it pretty close. So these are the pieces that I'll use for the 8 inches and these are the pieces that I'll use for the 11 inches. So we'll set these aside for the, for the moment and then we'll say, okay, we want to be 11 inches or 8 inches when I cut this off. So we can set, we can now set our stop block. So I've measured now and set my stop block such that it will be 8 inches from my blade. And we'll make these first two cuts. You'll see how quickly I can make these 45 degree angles.
Just make sure that you get your angles set up the right way. Once you have your first cut, so your distance is eight inches, then all you want to do is come back here and cut this angle at a nice 45, and your saw is already set up to do that. So there's my first side. So I've got two frames for the cajones here. This one is actually nine by seven. You can see how nicely these pieces fit together. And this piece is now nine by 12. And the reason for that is that, okay, I messed up when I measured this one and I cut it wrong. But what it did tell me is it was a little bit small. So instead of going eight by 11, I went nine by 12 and I'm more comfortable with this size box. So that's why you test. So the next thing we're gonna do is put some sound holes on each side here because we're gonna divide this with a partition in the middle, making one side larger and the other side smaller. Now I decided to put the hole in the center of the side pieces. So I simply went from corner to corner both ways, put an X where the center would be. And now I have clamped this onto my um, drill press here. And I'm gonna use a one and a half inch Forstner bit to drill down through there. I've got a piece on the bottom because these Forstner bits, if you try to drill all the way through, are gonna hit your plate down here. So I've got a piece here, a scrap piece underneath to catch that Forster bit as it goes through. It also should help with tear out, but you'll notice I've got the inside piece here. Look at my 45s. I've got the inside piece here on the bottom. So if there is any tear out, you're not gonna be able to see it from the outside. All right, so our side hole came out nice and neat, and both on the front side and on the back side here. So we're gonna do that with uh, our other side pieces that we have left. So we have our shapes cut out here for our mini cajon drum and our ultra mini cajon drum. Even though I made this too small, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it and I'll just give it to my granddaughter. And so the next step here is to put a top and a bottom onto our cajon. And like I said, I've got this eighth inch plywood here. Um, so I can place that on here. This particular cajon was nine by 12. So I cut this piece nine and a quarter by 12 and a quarter. So I've got a little lip that hangs out all the way around here. And I have a trim router that I can come back and clean this up. Uh, you could very easily cut it to be more exact if you don't have a trim router and then just sand down the edges so they'd be even. But since I've got a trim router, I've got a little bit more room to, to, uh, to play some games here and get it exactly fit the way I want it. So I'll make another one of these for the bottom of this cajon. And then the next step will be, I'm gonna make this two thirds bass drum side and one third treble drum side. And what I'll do is I'll just slide a piece down here in between. And so what I'll do is I'll measure for that two thirds of the way up from the end. And I'll just go over to my table saw and I'll just saw a groove in here such that I can cut this piece and slide it in there. And I want to do that. Uh, I need to make that cut on the inside before I glue it. So I cut the little slots here on both of my uh, boards in the cajon in order for me to be able to slide this eighth inch piece down inside like that. So when I glue this all together, the larger portion here will be the base side, the smaller portion will be the treble side of the little cajon drum. I have to make one more sheet of this to put on the bottom. I'm going to do that very quickly and then we're going to glue this together and won't be long, we'll be able to glue it all up and see how it sounds. If you make many boxes or picture frames, a good investment is this little band tool here. This is by Bessie. And what you do is you position the corners of the band tool 
around the corners of your box or frame, wind it tight with this, and then tighten it even more with this handle right here. And it'll pull those frames nice and square. And you can see that you can stick a square in there and it's, it's just perfect. So if you cut good 45s, use this band method uh, of gluing this stuff together, it works really well. Now we're going to go ahead and glue our partition in here. And we're going to go ahead and glue the top and the bottom on there. Um, there's no reason to stop at this point. So we'll, put a, we'll run a little bead of glue here and here. We'll slide this down inside. Then we're going to glue our top and bottom on. So we'll just put that on there, making sure we have a little bit of overhang. And we do. Now we should be able to just flip this box over. Make sure I didn't move my top. We're in good shape. Then we're going to glue this side. If I were gluing this, putting this together um, as a final project instead of a just a test project, I would not glue the top and the bottom on here right now. I'd wait until I finish the sides and finish the top to be whatever color I wanted them to be independently. But in this case, all we really want to do is get this thing put together and test for sound. We're going to put some weight on top of this and then we're going to let it dry. Our ribs have been on for two hours. So that's how long it took us to make one cajon, really one and a half cajons, because I started on that second small one. At this point, we're going to transfer our ribs into our pan. Look at those. Mm -mm. There are a lot of different ways to smoke ribs, but the way that I found works best for me is I smoke the ribs for two hours at 250. And then I put them in a pan and I put about a cup of, I like apple juice because it gives it a little sweet taste. About a cup of apple juice or so in the bottom of that pan. And then we're going to cover them up with some tin foil. Nice and tight. And then we're going to put these back on here for another two hours. And I mean to tell you, these are going to be tender and flavorful. Now the glue's only dried, you know, maybe 45 or 50 minutes. I took the blocks off of it just to test it, because I've left my equipment out. If I want to move forward and make more of these of this size, I want to go ahead and do it today. So I just want to go ahead and test this for sound. So you can hear the bass sound and the treble sound. Sounds pretty good. I'm no cajon expert, but I like the way it sounds. We're going to go ahead and make some more like this, and we'll give some away to friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. As I said, this took me about two hours to get this done. Um, I have a little trimming to do around the outside. I'll probably paint the sides black and maybe paint the, or maybe stain the top and the bottom just to make it look a little prettier. Uh, but I like the way it sounds and I hope you liked this project. If you did, don't forget, like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed the bonus rib footage. Those ribs are going to be good. Thanks again. See you next time.